So we spent the last uh, couple of days talking about different types of percentage problems and how you evaluate those. I wanted to get into, um, before our quiz next week, kind of how do you get an idea about what your answer should be without using a calculator? Because a lot of times you guys come up with answers that don't really make sense based on the numbers you're given. To do that, we're going to talk about estimating percents. Um, take, for instance, 13 24ths. Now, 13 24ths, I cannot do that in my head. Those numbers are not compatible, okay? Uh, what we're going to use here, the word compatible, I don't know, it always makes me think of like eHarmony or those, those dating sites. I don't know why, because that's what the commercials say. I'll mention on the seven levels, levels of compatibility. So that, that's kind of what I, I'm thinking about here now. Think, so, so imagine 13 and 24. Now, this is a stupid example, but like I always say, it's the stupid examples that help you guys uh, remember this stuff. 13, 20, 13 and 24, they like each other. You know, the, maybe they, they, uh, they go to the mall a couple times, they hang out, they, they walk around the football field 70, 72 times like you guys do on Friday nights. Um, but they're not quite sure. They, they don't, they're not quite compatible. So, you know, 13 has some things about 24 that, that he would change, and, and 24 has some things about 13 that she would change. Um, but really, if, if one changes, then that doesn't always work. Oftentimes, they both need to make a change. So what if I changed uh, to this? What if I changed this so that we had 12 and 24? So 24 stays the same. 12, 13 just goes down to 12 a little bit. Now, we just changed this slightly. So notice I have the about sign here. But now, 12 and 24, they're ready, to, they're ready to make a serious commitment. They're ready, they're compatible, they're working together. So we're looking, to, we're looking for, uh, for numbers that work together. Here's the definition of compatible numbers. Numbers that go well together because they have common factors. Think about why 12 and 24 go well together. Okay? 12 is a factor of 24. 12 24 is was one half, which you should know is 50%. Okay? There's a whole list of percentages we're going to talk about in a second that you should know. Twelve, one half is one of them. Um, another example, 23% of 208. I don't know that one in my head, but I do know that 23% can be rounded to 25%. And I do know that 25% is one fourth. Now, one fourth of 208, maybe I can do that in my head, but it would probably be easier if I did one-fourth of 200. One-fourth of 200 is 50. I could do that in my sleep pretty much. I might have to think about it. So, uh, by the way, as far as notes are concerned, go ahead and uh, write down this definition, okay? And then write down the, the two examples that I just revealed here. So, and then pause the video if you need to. What I'm talking about here, guys, is, uh, is estimating. Now, I want to talk about the difference between uh, rounding versus estimating. Because a lot of you, when you do this, what you'll do is you'll see 13 24 and you'll divide that out on a calculator, and you get 0.54, which is 54%, and then you'll round that to 50%. That's not estimating. That's rounding. When estimating, notice what I do. I got 13 24 Those don't work well together. So what I do is I round these numbers so that they work well together. I don't round my final answer. I change these numbers right here. So this is 12 24 which equals 1 half, which is 50%. Did I just pull my calculator out when I did this? I didn't even touch my calculator. Ooh. Board's being messy today. I didn't even touch my calculator when I did that. That's the idea here. The idea is that you do this in your head. And guys, there's more than one way to do this. Some of you, you're looking at this and say, hey, 12, 24, so that's not the only one. Why does, uh, why, does, why does 13 have to change? Why can't 24 change? Well, it could. 13, 24, you could make 13, 26. Still one half, right? So as long as we get a close answer, so if I do this problem, 
My exact answer is 50, 54%. That's my exact answer. Uh, I want to make sure that makes sense. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, 13 is about half of 24. So that's, yeah, that's 50%. Okay? Now, to do these problems, there are going to be some percents and fractions that you need to know. Okay? You need to know. So go ahead and write this down. Again, if it's in my handwriting, whether it's over here or over here, write it down. So fractions, you should know the percents for. You should know that one half is 50%. Change colors. You should know uh, one fourth is 25%. You should know that uh, three fourths is 75%. Okay, so you should know that, that kind of family of fractions. You should know one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, 20, 40, 60, 80%. Uh, you should know thirds. One-third and two-thirds is 33% and 66%. Obviously repeated, but we're just estimating here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. Obviously, the tenths are pretty easy. Those are ones that you should know. Two tenths, you notice I skipped, and I skipped four tenths as well. I'm going to skip five tenths because that's up here. Simplify those fractions. So those are your uh, 10%, 30%, and 70%. So all those are fractions that you should know. And we're going to use those right now. Here we go. First type of problem, we're finding percents. So when you find a percent, notice none of these numbers are percents, so I know right away I'm finding a percent. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a ratio, 74 to 99. So 74 out of 99, I'm going to change these numbers so they work together. This one should pop right out at you. If I take 74, change it to that 75, 99, change it to 100, 75 out of 100, is 75 percent. Over here is a little bit more tricky. 5 to 26. Remember, compatible numbers have common factors. So 5 is probably an easy one to keep. Certainly you could change it, but uh, it's probably easier to take this 26 and make it a multiple of 5. 5 to 25, if I simplify that, equals 1 fifth, and that's 20 percent. Notice, guys, I, sh I should be doing all this in my head, but what I'm looking for here when you do these problems, I'm looking for you to kind of uh, show me your thought process. I can't get in your head and, and read it and read your mind. So you got to show me kind of what the original ratio is, what you're rounding it to, and then uh, which fraction that we know the percent for are you using. Okay? This one, 16 to 62. Got a couple things I could do here. I mean, I could go uh, 15. 60. I could go 16 to 64. I could, get, you know, there's a bunch of different things I could do. Both of these, though, equal one fourth, which is 25 percent. Okay. So very quickly, that took me what two minutes to do all three of these. I've come up with a percent. Now these are not the exact answers. And notice, I didn't push this button one time. This thing has not been used. That's the key for these problems. Do not use a calculator when you do the quick check tonight. Okay? It's going to throw you off. All right, here we go. 21% of 66. Now notice, I've got the percent, and I've got a number. So now I'm looking for a number. So what I want to do here is I want to round these percents to percents that I know the fractions for. So 21%, that's pretty simple. We're going to round that to 20 because 20% is one-fifth. Now, I'm not going to do one-fifth of 66. Remember, multiplying by a fifth is the same thing as dividing by five. So I want to change 66 to some easy multiple of five. I could go 65, uh, but 65 divided by five is kind of hard in my head. It doesn't, you know, so 65, I'm going to do 60, and that's going to give me 12. 60 divided by five is 12. If you use 65, you get 13. It's an estimate, so we're close. 36%, a lot of people have trouble with this one. 36%, uh, a lot of people will round this down 
to 35. But we don't know a fraction for 35. A lot of people will round this up to 40. That's a little better because that's 2 fifths of 120. Now, a fifth of 120 is, uh, let's see, a fifth of 120 is 24. And then two of those, 20, two of those fifths, because notice this is 2 fifths. So two of those 24s would be 48. That's difficult. So there's got to be one easier than rounding this to 40 or rounding it down to 35. Well, everybody forgets about this one. How about 33%? 33% is one-third, and one-third of 120, that's really easy. That's 40. Notice 40, 48. I mean, I'm pretty close. Either way, I get a good estimate for my number here. Okay? 29% of 86. Uh, I can see a couple different ways to go here. Obviously, we can go down to um, we can go down to 25%, which is one fourth, because <clears throat> that's only four percent away. So that's pretty good. One fourth of probably 80 would be the easiest one here. One fourth of 80 is 20. That's pretty fast. Uh, also, four percent away though is that 33% again. So that's one third of well, 86. Probably easier just to take that to 90. And a third of 90 is 30. Notice we are off, we are a difference of 10 here. So, I mean, again, as long as we're pretty close. All right, last one here. Now notice, this is the, the third type of percent problem. It's a little bit more difficult. 44%, I'm going to round that to 50. Of what number? Well, of x equals 68. Okay? So, we got to kind of think backwards here. 68 I'm going to have a half to work with here, so I'm going to round this to 70. Now, if I think, if I take half of x, I get 70, right? So what number would I take half of to get down to 70? That's kind of the thought process you have to go by here. So really, this is 70 times 2, right? So my answer here is 140. That, that type problem down here, this is a little bit more difficult. We're going to spend more time focusing on these three problems and these three problems.